G'day and welcome to the channel. If you're first time to the channel, a couple of words of explanation. I'd like you to go to the description on this video where you'll find no affiliate links. I don't do affiliate links. I, I like to make sure my reviews are totally factual, objective and not influenced by commercial imperatives. If I had affiliate links in the description of this video, you might think that I was going to play down the bad things and hype up the good things in the hope that you would click on a link, buy the product and I'd get some coin in my pocket. Well, it doesn't work that way here. Here, it's just the facts, just the facts. And to be fair, sometimes my honest opinions, in which case I'll let you know if it's an opinion or if it's a fact. And uh, so that's where we stand. Thank you to my Patreon supporters. Patreon and YouTube advertising pay the bills here, not affiliate links. Now let's get on why you're here, because of this. The worst kept secret in the history of FPV. And it comes in this box. Here, see this is a box. It is the FPV or DJI FPV combo. Now we've known about this thing for months, for absolute months. And it is, as that, it's one of the worst kept secrets in the entire history of the FPV industry. Everybody knew it was there. Everybody knew what it looked like because there were so many leaks, which I find amazing because to get my hands on one of these, I had to sign a nine page NDA, non-disclosure agreement. In which, and I had to hand over my firstborn child, both my cats and my wife is on loan as well, until they're sure I'm not going to spill the beans ahead of time. That's how NDAs work. Um, so yeah, um, how did these other people manage to leak so much information without violating the NDA? I don't know. Uh, sometimes I wonder if these leaks are not more official than we might think, just to keep the hype and the excitement going. Anyway, I've got one. Now, I was last in the queue to get these. I have to always admit, always, always, um, state, I didn't buy this. I didn't pay for this with my own hard-earned cash. DJI sent this to me so that I could take a look at it and tell you what I think, what I find is good, what I find is bad. Now, unfortunately, I was right on the tail of the queue. I only got this a couple of days ago, honestly. Um, people know, a lot of people think I got this earlier, but I didn't. I only got it on Friday. And as I make this video, it's Tuesday, uh, which is Monday US time. So I've had it for three, three days, three or four days. And so now I'd like to cut to some flight video of this fantastic little freestyle quad. Let's cut to the flight video. What do you mean there's no flight video? That's right, there's no flight video. Why? Because I haven't flown it. Why? Let me tell you. Now this drone is not like your average freestyle drone. You can't just take it out of the box, charge the batteries and go fly the damn thing. You have to activate it. It has to be activated because DJI has a whole ecosystem which relies on you basically um, identifying yourself to them and I guess it gives them a, a trail back to you and it handles you know useful for things like warranty and all sorts of things but anyway you cannot fly a DJI product without activating it that includes the Osmo pocket camera for goodness sake what on earth is going on there but um, that's their business model that's what they've decided to do so I thought hey ho it comes with instructions yeah um, the quick start guide is anything but I have to say as far as instructions go it's terrible um, I have never seen such poor documentation. I was really surprised because DJI has such a great reputation for making things easy. Well, in this case, it was far from easy. Um, and it, I went through step by step and did all the bits and pieces. And then you take your smartphone and you load up the app. And I got a special link to the app because you guys who weren't supposed to get the app before time. And I so I got special access to the app, loaded it onto my smartphone, plugged everything in and nothing happened. Wouldn't talk to my phone. My phone just sat there going, I don't know about this DJI drone. Tried different accounts because DJI was supposed to set up my account so I had early access to this stuff. Tried different accounts, tried the New Zealand distributors account, nothing worked. So, ah, oh, maybe it's this phone, although it's a, it's got a um, eight core processor um, with Android 10. You think, and it's, I only bought it a few months ago, so it's pretty much, you know, modern contemporary phone. And it runs every other app I've thrown at it without any problems. So maybe it could just be something, maybe it had a faulty USB port, although it does work. Um, try a Samsung Galaxy S8. It's on a list of approved phones that work with DJI's um, Fly app. Loaded onto the Samsung, powered it up, exactly the same. Wouldn't talk to the drone at all, just didn't even reckon, well, wouldn't talk to the, the goggles because you have to do it through the goggles. These are the goggles. Again, everyone's seen these, version two of the DJI FPV goggles. Now, on the, if you're just buying them for FPV, you plug them into your computer, you activate them and they work. Not so easy with the, the whole combo setup. What you've got to do, is plug your phone into the goggles through a, an, a, a, an OTG connector and then run the app. But no talkie, no talkie, no, didn't want to know at all. Um, I could turn on OTG on here and get the goggles appearing as a, 
a, a, a folder just with the data, so an external data storage device, but it would the app would not talk to the goggles. So I spent a, over a day working with DJI local support to try and get this working. The final suggestion was, can you borrow an iPhone? Because I use Android, right? So maybe there's an Android problem, I don't know, but two phones, multiple cables, just didn't work, didn't work. So it could be the fact that the app um, wasn't properly tested. It was a beta app, my account or the, the accounts weren't set up. I don't think it was that though, because the dealers or the distributors account didn't work. So nothing worked. So I've had this for four days and I still can't fly the damn thing, which is really kind of disappointing. So why am I making a video if I can't fly it? Well, I figured every man and his dog has probably got their flight videos out this morning. Unboxings, I don't do unboxings. Um, if you want to see an unboxing, go and look at all the other videos. There's got to be a heap of them out there unboxing this. But this is what you get. I mean, it's not really rocket surgery. Um, uh, so what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to do a look at the, the, the good things about this product and the bad things from an engineering and, and, and just a general standpoint, general perspective, because I can't fly, can't give you the flight footage. Go look elsewhere for flight footage. When I get it in the air, if I get it in the air, I will do some flight footage and I'll tell you what I think because my perspective is probably going to be more aligned with a lot of the people looking to buy this thing. Now, I'm not a hardcore freestyler or a hardcore racer. I'm someone who flies for fun, really enjoy it. I can do loops and flips and rolls, but I actually prefer more the swoopy cinematic stuff. And that's probably where this machine is headed. Um, and so, but I've had a lot of background in freestyle quads as such, the technology and so forth. And so I'm going to tell you what it would be like to get into this from that perspective. But also, if you're a complete newbie to drones, is this going to be the drone for you? Well, you'll have to stay tuned and find out. But what I want to do now is just take you through some of the things I've noticed about this drone and what I think it will mean to people who buy them. Okay, let's look at the bad things, because there's some bad things about this drone. There's some things that oh, I'm not particularly happy with. We'll start with the bad, we'll finish with the good, so you leave on a high note. These propellers, they're plastic. The plastic, honestly, plastic. Plastic went out in freestyle quads and, and racing quads, I don't know, maybe four or five years ago. Polycarb is now the material of choice because it doesn't break nearly as easily. Polycarb, you can bend it straight again and keep flying. But you've got to remember, DJI will be making a fortune out of selling spare props on these things. A fortune. So why would they make props more durable than they need to be? These are just plastic. And that it's, yeah, I, I don't. It's not going to take much of a crash to put a little white crease in the root of one of these prop blades and then you have to replace it. So. I'm not particularly, you know, from a, from a perspective of someone who has more than their fair share of crashes, that's going to be an expensive option. And of course, they're not standard props. They don't come with a 5mm nut and a thread. No, no, no. They're special clip-in props that only DJI at this stage make. So you probably want to stock up on spare props. If you intend to fly this thing freestyle, you want to stock up on spare props because there could be a shortage if many people end up having crashes. Now, the next thing is this battery. This has a battery in the back here. It's quite a big battery. See that? It is a 2000, I think 2000 or 1800 milliamp. 6S battery, and that's fine, but you can't just throw any old LiPo in here. Oh, no, 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 no. This is the inkjet printer of drones. Um, DJI were making a lot of money by selling these batteries. I don't expect they'll be very cheap, um, but they do make life easy for people who don't want to mess around with balance charges and things. Cool, you got to do that. It comes with a charger, you plug it in there, and it takes care of everything. Charges, everything, little lights flash, you know when it's charged. So that's a good thing, but, and also I like, I'll get onto the good things later, but um, it, this battery is proprietary, it will cost you an arm and a leg probably. Um, and the thing is, if you're going to be flying freestyle, if you're going to use this quite a lot, you'll need a lot of batteries. Yeah, one battery will not do you because it, it just it takes about an hour to charge. When I was charging this the first time, it took about an hour to charge. So that's a lot of charge time. And also, you've got to use DJI's charger, which means even if you buy four or five of these batteries, you can't charge them all at once unless you buy four or five chargers because they've got a special connection here. You can't just plug in your average um you know, four button charger in there and charge it. You've got the DJI charger because it has a special connector in here, I think with the smart things, it's got little extra data lines. As far as I'm aware, you cannot charge this except with the DJI charger. So if you buy extra batteries, you're gonna spend a long time charging before every flying session if you wanna get those batteries up to scratch. This may be something other um, DJI drones uh, have the same situation, same problem. I don't know because I haven't had any DJI drones before this. This is my first DJI drone, which is probably another reason why my perspective might be of value to people watching this video because if you don't have a DJI drone, you are probably going to be looking at all the same things I'm looking at and going, oh wow, that's good, or oh wow, that's terrible. So that's the battery. It's a major structural component of the drone itself. You've got to put it in there, but um, and that contributes significantly to the weight, and it is nearly 800 grams, 800 grams. And if we look at that, and we look at the size of the motors, they're not very big. The motors are not very big in this thing. Can, you know, they're, I'll measure them. 
um, and see what they are later. And I'll put, the, I'll put the size down here so you know. But they're about the size of a normal mini quad motor. But a normal mini quad, you're looking at you know, maybe 500, 600 grams if you've got a good one. So you're looking at an extra 60% weight loading with no extra increase in, prop, in, in motor size. And of course, these plastic props will flex and bend. So they're not going to be um, uber good in high G maneuvers. Probably be very efficient because they're incredibly thin. But once you start pulling some Gs, these things are going to deform and deflect. And I don't think you get a lot of efficiency out of them. Um, and then there's the whole issue, the whole issue, of course, of activation. Now, if you want to go out and fly, you don't want to have to take a smartphone with you. I think once you've activated, you probably don't need the smartphone. But the, the whole process is just so clumsy and complicated. If you want to fly this thing around like a freestyle quad, you've got to do a few things. And here's the transmitter. We all know it's got a transmitter. It's got a little poppy up aerial. Bing! See that? And it's got sticks. And for those who want to know, yes, you can convert to mode one very easily. I've already done it with this one. Mode one is just a software change because both sticks are spring centered because it's how DJI drones fly. They fly, if you turn on, if you hold your transmitter like that, the drone just sits there. That's the way DJI drones work. The GPS and all the other systems just hold it in place like it's anchored in the sky. That's great. And if you want to move forward, then you just push forward on the forward stick. And if you want to come back, pull back. If you want to spin around, use the rudder stick. If you want to use go left or right, use the left and right. It's simple as beans. That's why so many people fly DJI drones. It's because they're so damn simple to fly. But when you want to get into freestyling, it's not just a case of flicking a switch. Oh, no, 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 no. You've got to flick a switch, and then you've got to move your throttle stick to a certain position and hold it for a few minutes and... And it's, well, I won't go. Through, I haven't used it myself. I've just been told about this by the distributor. But um, it is not a simple process. The, the concept being that they don't want you to accidentally go into freestyle mode and crash your drone. But by the same token, it's a lot of faffing around if you do want to freestyle your drone. Um, that's, that's unfortunate. Um, there is an emergency switch. This one I'm on the top here. There's also the pause button for video. If you whack that, it'll immediately go back into that sort of anchored in the sky mode. So if you're heading for a major building or you're whatever, you're checking out something, just press that button, it'll, it'll stop and stay exactly where it is. Then you can take a moment to re recover yourself and just fly around normally again. But what I want to know, and I can't test this until later, is it has a record button on this side and it has a pause button on this side. So if I'm in sport, if I'm in the, the freestyle mode and I'm flying around and I'm recording, if I want to stop recording and I press this button, is it going to stop recording or is it going to go into that anchored in the sky mode? I don't know, because I can't fly it. Only know once we're flying it, we'll find out then. In the meantime, this transmitter feels very nice, solid. The DJI stuff does feel very, very solid, well engineered. Um, the sticks are quite small, but they feel very nice in my hands. Um, I've got no problems with that. They give you a little wrench you can use to turn the um, centering stick into a normal throttle if you want to fly a lot of freestyle, but that's going to make it more difficult to fly in the GPS guided mode because you have to have to make sure you get it right in the middle to stop it going up or down all the time. There's probably some dead band in there. Um, so yeah, but the whole activation thing, such a faff, such a farting around if your phone doesn't work. Hopefully the app, when it's finally released, probably today if you're watching this video, I'll download the app again from the Play Store rather than side load it through the DJI website. And then I'll try and set it up again if it goes. I'll try and get you some flight footage. But if it doesn't, I don't know where to go from there. I don't know where to go from there. That's uh, that's for sure. Um, and a lot of the control, of course, is done through the goggles, which is great, which is fantastic. Um, so let's take another look at some of the positive features now that, we've, now that I've panned it so badly. Now, the most positive feature of this whole setup is obvious when you pick stuff up. It's, it's not just built, it's engineered. DJI's engineers have put a lot of thought into building something that feels very, very high quality, substantial, robust, and perfectly made for the job. Certainly the transmitter feels fantastic. The drone itself is heavy, but these arms are super stiff. They are so damn stiff. Stiffer than any carbon that I've seen. Super stiff, hardly any movement in those at all. So they will be quite, quite strong, but they will break. And repairing them is obviously not gonna be cheap because it's DJI. Um, and again, I've already mentioned the props, but um, the, the, and this whole battery thing is brilliant because you can put the battery in the quad, but you don't have to plug it in. The, the battery strap or the battery connector is on a rubber thing, so you can leave that out. You don't have to worry about any parasitic drain, draining the battery or whatever. Or you, you just leave it unplugged. It's, it's totally safe then. That is really, really nice. I like that. It's, it's a well thought out uh, way of doing things. Um, now we've got the gimbaled camera at the front. It's gimbaled, in the, I think, in the vertical axis only, not the horizontal. So I guess if you're doing this, you're going to get that on your picture. It's not like it's not like a Phantom or a Mavic. I don't think there's any. Let's have a look at that because I haven't really closely inspected the. I haven't inspected the gimbal much. Um, there's, yeah, it's only vertically gimbaled. There's no horizontal gimbaling. So whether you take out any role in software or whatever, I don't know what you do. But we're, again, 
flight videos will show us what happens there for sure. It's got collision avoidance or, or you know obstacle detection. It's got a couple little sensors here, a couple underneath. So if you're flying towards something in the normal mode or in the sport mode even, I think it will stop and say, don't be stupid, you're going to kill someone or going to break a tree or something, which is that's great you know, for people that are, you know, learning to fly or just still want to fly in the normal modes, that gives you a lot of confidence and security when you're flying around. And I suspect given that it's DJI, I don't know, maybe it does the follow me and all that stuff, I've got no idea because I can't fly the damn thing. Um, it's got LEDs on it, yeah, ho-hum, everything's got LEDs these days. But to give you an idea of how well it's engineered, there's a fan in this thing. It's actually a five copter, not a quad copter. Um, because there's a fan in there, because this thing gets pretty warm, pretty toasty. There's a lot of processing going on here. We're talking 4K, 60 frames per second for the camera. And we're talking HD video back to your goggles. So there's a lot of processing goes on. There's a really nice little heat sink there and a fan that blows air over it. So when it's sitting on the ground, it's not going to overheat. Because one of the problems with the existing FPV air unit is that they can overheat and then they won't record. This gets around that, I think, or should get around that quite nicely. This black or smoky plastic um, shell comes off. And you can put a green one. They give you a green one. Why green? I don't know. No idea. Um, but they give you a green one as well. That's fantastic. Ho hum. Everyone wants one of those. Um, it's got a downward facing LED, which I guess helps when it's landing um, and in low light conditions. I don't know because I haven't flown it. Um, I keep saying that a lot, don't I? Um, and it just overall, it just feels like a really, really good quality product. But it feels like a good quality product that's made to sell propellers. <laughs> because I think there's going to be so many broken props with this thing. Um, which leads me to, the, leads me to the, the, the question, I suppose, which I'm going to ask now, which I can't really answer. I'm just going to give you my honest opinions. Who should be buying this thing? Now, if you're an existing freestyler or, or racer, I don't think you're probably going to spend your money on this. I really don't think you are because it's, um, it's 800 grams. It's got average size motors. Um, it's going to be pretty fragile. The props will send you broke in the first week alone. Um, and it's, it's probably, but it's not designed for you. I really don't think this is designed for anyone that's already got a freestyle quad. I really don't think it is. You know who's going to, I've said this in a video before on my XJ channel. I think I know who's going to buy this and who DJI very cleverly have targeted this craft at. And it is the people who might otherwise buy a Mavic. You know, you go and you look at it and say, hmm, I can buy a Mavic and it's got a 4K camera and it's got all this GPS stuff and whatever. But man, I'd really like to be able to do something a little more than the Mavic allows. The Mavic's got sport mode, but yeah, it's not very fast and you can't do flips and rolls with sport mode. I'd like something so that I could just do a little bit of Mr. Steel or a little bit of Vanover or a little bit of that x -Jet guy. Um, you're right. So I think that's where they're targeting it because let's face it, the existing drone market, the market for Mavics and Phantoms and things is pretty saturated. They did really well with the Mavic. Um, Mini 2 and the Mavic Mini because they're the sub 250. This is not sub 250. Um, but going sub 250 opened up a whole new market. But the market for Mavics and that with all the increasing regulation and remote ID and all that sort of crap, that market is pretty saturated. So they needed to create a new market. Now, if there's no point in DJI producing a hardcore freestyle or racing drone because they just couldn't compete on a price basis. So the, every man and his dog's churning out carbon frames, super cheap, and you can buy super cheap motors from Banggood, and the flight controllers are 30 bucks. Uh, you can't beat that in terms of price. So what DJI have done quite cleverly is made a Mavic in Morph's clothing. This is, this, is, this is basically everything a Mavic will do, except the stabilization in, uh, in roll, but it gives you a whole lot more. Once you get tired of doing you know, wonderful aerial shots of the scenery, you can switch it into freestyle mode and have a ball. Have a ball until you run out of props. Um, and that's where they're aiming it. And I think they will be very successful in that because they do have this whole FPV in a box thing or this whole drone in a box thing pretty sorted apart from the problems I've had, which, as I say, may be related to the fact that it's Android and I've got it early. Um, we'll soon find out. But uh, yeah, this has opened up a market that didn't exist anymore because, uh, previously because Someone who might be thinking of getting into freestyle or cinematic um, drone flying, I dare say that they would have found it very difficult to transition from a Mavic to a freestyle quad in acro mode because the, the skill levels required are dramatically different. Uh, flying some, a freestyle quad in acro mode is almost impossible for someone who hasn't spent a lot of time practicing or a lot of time on a simulator, whereas anyone can fly a Mavic or a Phantom in the standard GPS mode or even the sport mode. So what I'm thinking is that DJI have seen that and they've decided to create this, this hybrid. This hybrid, it is basically a Mavic, but it also has some 
freestyle genes. Just enough freestyle genes to make it attractive to people that might have otherwise said, no, I just hang on to my Mavic. I'm happy with my Mavic. Yeah, I'd like to freestyle, but oh, I can't be bothered going through all that, having to solder wires and stuff. Those people are probably looking at this now and going, ooh, my Mavic's fun, but it looks like more fun. Maybe I will buy this. And that's how they're going to open up their market. That's how DJI have created a whole new market that they will own. They'll own that market just like they really own the market for camera drones. You know, if you see a drone out there, nine times out of ten, it is a DJI drone because they've just got the whole thing down pat. They've mastered the whole marketing, packaging, everything. And that's what they're going to do with this. So if you're an existing freestyler, I, I wouldn't waste my money on it. I, I would not buy one of these. Well, actually, I tell you, I, would, I probably would buy one of these, but because I've always wanted a camera drone. I've never had a Phantom or a Mavic. And sometimes when I'm doing um, filming with a, a, a freestyle quad, I'm thinking, I'd love to have something that would just stay there uh, or had a gimbal on the camera or whatever. And I've been sorely tempted to, to get myself one simply for some shots I want to get. This would give me that almost the same kind of capabilities, but also give me the ability to have a bit of free reign and do some swoopy passes and things. So yeah, I might be tempted to buy this. But if you just want to do freestyle and burn up batteries, bashing up bandos, you, you don't want this. You're not going to want this. You'll be, you know, you, but having said that, of course, if you wanted the goggles and the controller, which might work with future air units, we don't know, um, it's probably not a bad bundle and just the quad would be just something you'd get along for the money. Um, that's a value equation only you can work out. But I would say that the big market for these are people who already have Mavics or are thinking of buying a Mavic and this may be an alternative. So yeah, only time will tell if I'm right or I'm wrong. But in the meantime, um, that's this. Now, the, uh, uh, the couple of things I wanted to point out just to show again how clever DJI are. They're very clever people, very clever engineers at DJI, and I'll show you why. Now, they claim up to 20 minutes flight time with this thing, which you think at 800 grams, how on earth are they getting 20 minutes out of an 800 gram drone with an 1800 or 2000 milliamp hour battery? That sounds like an awful lot. It doesn't look like your typical long range or endurance drone, does it? And remember, it's got a 10 kilometer uh, radio range, up to 10 kilometer radio range, so it's long range. And I've worked out, I think I've worked out how they're doing it, at least part of the way they're doing it. Now they quote this um, up to 20 minutes at a, at a specific speed, I think it's 24 kilometers an hour or something. And if you look carefully, now the, the, the props on this thing are angled. Let me hold it out here so you can see. Um, the, the whole idea of angled props was kind of big back in 2016. A lot of quads came out with angled props, the idea being that there's less angle of the body in the airflow and things that they go faster. Well, this is done very cleverly. If you look at these arms, they're actually like wings. They actually have an aerofoil section on the arms of the quad itself. And you've effectively got a, a, dual, bipl a, a dual plane, it's like a biplane here. We've got two wings that are holding the motors. And if you angle it forward at that angle there, which is, look at the angle of the props, it's probably going to be a reasonable cruising speed. These arms act like wings. They do. They will produce lift and they'll produce quite a reasonable amount of lift which will reduce the amount of work the props have to do to keep the thing in there. It becomes almost, almost an aeroplane at cruising forward speeds. And so it was interesting to see that that up to 20 minutes is at a forward speed, not in a hover, at a forward speed where these wings are adding lift. Now that is incredibly clever. That's a smart move on the part of, of DJI because in a normal, normal quad, we have the flat plate arms and the motor's bolted to them. And when you angle it up, they're actually a wing pointing negatively, so they're actually trying to pull the quad down because they have a negative angle of attack to the airflow, which pulls the quad down, which means you've got to put more power in, which means they're not very efficient. DJI have turned it on its head and said at forward cruising speeds, these arms have a slight angle of attack, they're producing lift, they will re reduce the amount of work the motors have to do, therefore lower amps, longer flight times. Bloody brilliant, that, that is really, really clever. I'm, I'm very impressed with the way they've done that. Now the other thing I notice is that the, the motors have some coning angle on them, which is to say that they're not, the props aren't dead flat, they cone up somewhat. And that's probably a stability thing, I'm not sure, I've noticed it on a number of uh, other quads. Not typically your freestyle quads, but by having coning angles on the props, it's, it's almost as kind of a automatic dihedral, so if the, if the craft slips a little bit, it will automatically roll in that direction and come back. So it works with the flight controller to increase stability, especially in a bit of a wind. Again, little things, tiny details that at first glance, you wouldn't notice, but I've been going over this with a fine tooth comb, looking for the things I like and the things I don't like. And these are two things I really like, the way they've thought about the aerodynamics, because normally quadcopters, people don't think about aerodynamics. They're a, they're a small windowless building with four motors on them. But this is aerodynamic. And the only thing I'm not so sure about are these feet at the front, which are, these are 
ahead of the center of pressure, which means uh, the center of gravity, which means they will try and cause your instability if we're not careful. I, I guess the controller's got ability to take care of that and uh, to, to compensate for that. But I, I, I'm surprised they had to have those long feet to make it sit level when it's on the ground, I suppose. But they are the only thing I can see that isn't particularly aerodynamically expedient. I can't see a reason why they would have those like that. But it's a lower drag. Te teardrop shape, aerofoil shape is the lowest drag you can get. So it's, if they just had a round section, it would be more drag. If they had a square section, more drag. So it is solely to reduce drag that they've got that aerofoil shape on the verticals, I'm pretty sure. So that's my look at the DJI FPV thing. And you cannot understand how pissed off I am that I can't fly this thing because we've just had several days of beautiful weather and now it's supposed to rain for a week. So even if I get this thing going tomorrow at the official launch, I'll have to sit around for a week as we endure thunderstorms and torrential rain until I can fly it. I really wish DJI had got this to me a lot sooner and we'd worked out the, pro the issues with activating it because I'd love to have done some flight video. But I don't know why, I'm always at the back of the list. I guess I should be thankful I got one at all, and I, indeed I am, because I will be doing a lot more um, investigation into this, looking at a lot more detail. I might do a little bit of a teardown for those who want to see. And we'll look at some of the things that, uh, if you've got questions, of course, bung them in the description of this video. I'm all keen. And for those, as I say, who are new to the channel, I have a background in electronics engineering, a background in aerodynamics and a background in general engineering. So anything you want to know, I'll do my best to have a look and tell you. In the meantime, thank you for watching. Now, should you rush out and buy one of these? Um, I can't say yes or no. Um, if I am to assume that it flies like a Mavic in its normal modes, and it is a, a, a modest freestyle quad in its uh, freestyle mode, and you can afford it and you don't have an existing investment in the hobby, then I can't say that it wouldn't be a bad buy. I, it's, it's a pretty good buy, but as I say, get lots of spare propellers. Um, and yeah, um, I would certainly buy one of these in preference to a Mavic. Certainly would, or, or other um, camera drone at this stage. Um, yeah, just have to stay tuned, I suppose. So um, I never usually say this, but if you're not a subscriber, if you're new to this channel, why not subscribe and, and just keep an eye out and you'll see more videos coming on this thing. And I'll, I'll go through and explain what I have to do eventually to get the damn thing activated. And just as a final, a final, <laughs> I had to laugh. This is, I actually laughed out loud when I saw this. Now, now, we all know that the rules regarding drones are kind of crazy at the moment. They're, you know, they're being treated like lethal weapons and you know, you've got to register as an offender and you've got to sit exams and all that sort of stuff. And it's crazy. These, you know, I don't know. But what they've done here in New Zealand is they've included the little, a little brochure from CIA, our equivalent of the FAA or Transport Canada or, or whoever, CASA in Australia. They've included a little brochure, safety brochure. And I say little. Get this. Actually, I hope, the, I hope the green screen doesn't go through the green screen. Um, this is it. This is the little brochure that they've chosen to include. Look at the size of it. It's tiny. It's like, oh, if we have to, might as well. <laughs> it's just unbelievable. Um, yeah. Uh, anyway, but they did put it in there. Fair deuce, they did put it in there. And while I'm on that, I, I think I have to say another thing. You won't, I wouldn't buy one of these to fly bandos for another very good reason. I live quite a long way from the local airport here. I can't fly this at the airport. Even if I could have got this going, I couldn't fly at the airport because it's an airport and this has geofencing. Geofencing, for goodness sake. So DJI decide in their wisdom, you may not fly at an airport. You may not fly near an airport. In fact, my home is three or four kilometers from the airport and I still could not fly this without unlocking it first. I mean, goodness gracious me. I think a word to DJI, if you're watching this, and I'm sure you are because you wouldn't have sent this out if you didn't want to watch the video I made. A word to you, realize that this is a different class of machine. Now, a lot of freestyle action happens below 100 feet. Most of it happens below 80 feet. So instead of geofencing and saying you cannot fly here because it's within this area close to an airport, why don't you just say you can fly here, but you have a maximum altitude of 80 feet. Now, two kilometers from an airport, there will be no manned aircraft at 80 feet. I can guarantee you that unless they've got bigger problems than a drone. So let, if you want to sell this to a group of people that want to freestyle in parks and things, and many parks are within a spitting distance of hospital helipads and airports and things, and it's quite safe to fly there, alter your geofencing on this craft only, and only in the freestyle mode so that you can fly up to 80 feet above the ground in freestyle mode, regardless of 
well, how close you are to an airport, or at least make the little boundary just a few hundred yards around an airport so that people can fly these things safely without being constrained because there are so many places around the world now where you can't fly any DJI drone because there are just airports and helipads everywhere. And if you want a mass acceptance of this, you have to let people fly it in places where it is safe to do so. So change your geofencing. This is, I cannot fly this at the airport. I cannot fly it around my, in the parks around my home, even though it's totally safe. And even though I'm legally allowed to, DJI says, we know better and we're not going to let you. That's not good enough. That's not good enough at all. Because remember, if I don't have my smartphone, I can't, if it's not talking to it, can't even change any of that, can't request a, 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 a you know, clearance to fly. <sighs> no, sorry. Another thing I'd like to check is someone told me, I haven't seen any notification of it in the documentation that this says ADSB in. I don't know. I can't test it until I get it activated. So that's it. I will leave you with that. And as I say, there'll be many more videos to come on this thing. If you want to see them, go to the comments. Tell me if you want to see them. Thank you for watching the video. And um, as I say, if you want more, just stay tuned. There will be more. In the meantime, thanks to my Patreon supporters. You make it all possible. And now I will uh, go home, edit up this video, and continue trying to get this damn thing to talk to my phone. Or any phone. I don't have an iPhone. I'm not a rich YouTuber. I'm only an Android YouTuber. Bye for now.